the video that I sent. تازه حبوا فلت انه ما عالتكوها ما مسرات دورو جناقل ابي ارترا زي حمدي اتهمرو جبلت انه ما عالتكن بزيحي مرت حليفو حق مزرع ماشي بزي فتنا زي حلف نقاري يلان فتنا هبزلو نقول لهنا بروه نقاري نقول حد ما عالتها ما عالتات تحتو لا تمالا ليسات مزقن الامرر كابزقات امن تني عبا شكر ابي هو تيون كله بزي سئل خوينا تنبر مالتي كابزن دقن حنتي تچني اتبلني مو هي تچني مو دارجني مشات كرخبكي ليا نونو مشات هاي صنحني لا تني دار مشات هاي صنحني مسبلتني مو قدن كرخبال لن تركنا فتحت غزا تركو خوينا نصلي اصنحناني بزحات نعم كابك ساين غبراني لنا نابزنا يندقاش تمص هو كاشا صاني هني اما وداتا انا بحنت غزا كفت مسبلكو كمزي شقاقيا بحت صيرو انت الى شقاقات كنت صوري دولو تعي مدرسي صوري دولو ولا حنت غنعص الى حرا الى تنهجي او غحاب لو نساتهو امريرا كبد انا تصلص اني حاتني مرت تاليا انا حال حيزه سخيد دلخو قال لكن اني حاتني ابتا وانت ا ابي هو تيزير الساعه مال اخصبك وخيني اسمعني هو بزعس شب شق دوم مال اخي اتو يخبل لنا خل خون قلنا تا تصلط نيتا قلنا مال اخ ماني هاتس انا مزيا يكون انسي طلعت اسوالها زغن تزاري بوا حراي بحالي بدل بحالي دي ري ما سبلتني قصيلا نابتا صلوتا بدي حرق حافيله قالي انت يكون ني رقيت مخيله تحان لا تن كيده كبت معلتي ابي هو ت كبت يفك انت خوين حزبنا زبل كل معلتي انت خوينو تخويني يودني ما تصلي بوت هاي السال زبل كل ما عالتي كله زب مرات سكران ذاك زولا تجي اسي يري ادو هون ناب غزا كتصل بينا دو تعاسي اس تروح بوت خاون اللي حسب يا بحقي مراتي مرير نجر بقى كابتا دي جني ادبلتني ساهم زي اجر زق على ففوا وي كم زي اجر زق زف له هو هابك زي ابي هرا كل مزي بقى تحسبني ولا قد في رهري اخا ما داي كلني اصحاب جي كل وجه انا عايز ذكر زي مرتي ابي هو تي مره رحلفكوا مع عاد زي يا شي ابي هر امال لسمو داي كل حكم صلات كمان جزاء اخر يعني زي ابي هر ماشي بس استعجت اتصلي لا تعج انا املا خاطر ولا معلتي كترك انا ون عيني كريعه شعوخهم تفدخو حسباي مالتي نفسي قلت يا انت كبدتي ونل the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Greetings to you all, followers of our channel, members of the Eritrean Orthodox Daughter Church throughout the world, and especially living here in North America, in Canada. Glory be to God for giving us this day and this chance to be part of this sacred blessing in supporting our mothers at the same Dimiana Monastery back home in Eritrea. Today in this program will be it will be a fundraising event where we will be speaking about and also lending our hands to our mothers who are calling for help in supporting them to accomplish a sacred project 
which they have executed or they have started very recently. St. Demianas Monastery uh, is located back home in Eritrea. This monastery, uh, being one of the uh, youngest monasteries in Eritrea, has been uh, very functional and a very important uh, organization or monastery in our church's history. And yet, this is only the beginning, but not the end. They still have to accomplish much more, and they'll be able to make a history in our last lifetimes. For this reason, today we're gathered here uh, to talk about, have a better understanding of about the monastery itself, and most broadly, to talk about what the meaning of monasticism is, and what specifically our mothers back home in, in the monastery do. Uh, but before that, I would like to introduce um, our members for today. My name is Diakon Petros Mengstab. I'm from uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, from Deborah Hail, St. Michael Church. Uh, we also have our brother, uh, Diakon Filmon, uh, from Michigan, Medhani Alam. We have our sister, Milena Yamana, from Deborah Zion, Kedistamara, Atlanta. And also our sister, Lydia Manuel, from Kedistas and Lassie, uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, today we'll be uh, focusing more about uh, the monastery and also uh, we'll be supporting our mothers. In his uh, book, Saint uh, Sirach, he mentions in the Wisdom of Sirach, chapter 35, verse 9 to 10, he says, Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and give to him with gener generosity according to your windfall. For the Lord is he who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. We need to understand that throughout, by giving or by, by lending our hands to our mothers, we're not simply giving money, but we are actually being part of a blessed project. This project, it is not only a worldly one, but it's a heavenly project. Yes, we have been participating in many other projects throughout our, our lives, we have seen many projects take place, but this is a special one where we, where God is inviting each one of us to be part of um, a huge blessing. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 20, he mentions, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. This is a very important thing to understand and to adhere to. By giving a simple amount of money, it could be $100, $10, $20, $1, it makes a difference. But God, mostly God loves a true forgiver. And through that money that we are supporting or that we are donating, we are building a treasure or a house for ourselves in the heavenly kingdom. It has been... Uh, being mentioned by our uh, fathers, uh, by his grace, Bishop Elias, and all our fathers, the priests and deacons throughout the day, that we, by participating in this project, we are making a history in our lifetimes. This is a very um, great opportunity and a blessing for all of us to be part of. And thanks be to God for this once more again. Throughout our program, we will be discussing who is Saint Dimiana, uh, what the monastery does, how is it benefiting our church entirely, uh, the problems that they're facing as of current, and the new project that is on hand as of now, and what needs to be done uh, to accomplish this project. For this, I would also love to uh, invite all of you to look at that bottom right corner in your screen. There will be a QR code where you can scan with your phone and you can donate any amount of money that you that you can cheerfully and happily. Uh, before that, I will also pass it on to our brother, um, Aaron. He'll give us updates on the um, donations that have been submitted as of now. And we will continue on with our program uh, for the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Dankwan Petros, and all of you brothers and sisters. Uh, this is a, a, a wonderful chance for all of us to be united uh, in, in helping and aiding our, our mothers. Uh, we help them with our money, 
They help us with their prayers, and it sustains all of us in this uh, life we live in. So um, I just want to mention uh, there are many ways that people can, can donate. One of the ways is uh, through your church. You know, a lot of churches are holding fundraisers. Uh, and another way is for a lot of us that have access to credit cards or a debit card, another way to donate is through um, GoFundMe. So our GoFundMe account, as you can see on the on the link, um, it has actually $157,280. What you can do is if you are, you know, someone of age uh, who has access to a bank account um, or a credit card or debit card or a PayPal account, you can actually press donate uh, and then um, put the amount that you want to donate. Uh, make sure you, you put zero on the tip part. The, the tips don't come to us, don't come to the monastery. So make sure you put zero on that. And then you, you submit all of your information. And at the end, make sure the amount that you see at the end matches the amount that you intentionally, you initially put. If it's $100, it should only say $100. If it says $112 or $120, that means it's $20 is actually going to GoFundMe. So GoFundMe should not charge you money. Um, make sure you, you, you hit that. So we've started this live stream uh, almost 16, 17 uh, hours ago. Um, you know, we had um, people from Dubai, our brothers and sisters from Dubai, uh, Israel, Ethiopia, Eritrea, South Africa, uh, Europe. Uh, now finally, it came to Canada and America. So within this... 18, uh, 17, 16, 16 hours, we've raised uh, about almost uh, $24,000. We added $24,000. And that brings our sum amount, which was donated or uh, uh, fundraised by different churches from different areas of U.S. and Canada. It brings the total to $520,450. $520,450. So we would like you to be part of this. Uh, you know, whatever money you can donate, whatever amount that you have, uh, it's a season of giving, you know, in America and Canada. So let's utilize that and, and, and give what we can. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, our brother, uh, Aaron, for giving us the updates. And we will uh, catch up with those updates later on in our program here. Uh, as I've mentioned before, some of us might not understand what exactly monasticism is or what, in fact, uh, it is uh, and how is it like part uh, of our church and why should we even care about it. And uh, for that, uh, to, uh, to explain to us, I'll invite our brother, Diak Filmon from the uh, Madhani Alam, Michigan, and he'll be explaining to us that. Hello, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the the live that you guys are viewing, um, and I hope most importantly that you are donating your money. Um, if you haven't donated up until now, um, I hope it's because you have some questions. And if you have some questions, um, hopefully we can help and answer those questions. And so um, we're talking about Saint Damiana uh, convent or monastery. And before we get to, you know, what's going on there specifically, we have to kind of go back to the roots on what is monasticism and what is monastic life? What does that mean for our church? Um, and what are, uh, and why does, you know, all of your, uh, all, why does the, why, why should we donate? Why should we, uh, give our money to this? Um, and so first let's start with the idea of monasticism. Uh, monasticism, uh, has existed since the beginning, um, since, since Adam and Eve, uh, from people like Enoch, um, from people like uh, St. John the Baptist, um, and to even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself, who fled into the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights. Um, and so this idea of monasticism, um, in, in short, is simply to withdraw from the world um, in order to dedicate yourself to worship uh, to God, um, to building a relationship with God. And so um, it's important um, and the idea of monasticism that we have today began around the third century um, AD. And so after Jesus Christ died on the cross and was resurrected, you see um, the apostles who all were martyred except St. John um, and martyrdom from that point 
on for the next 200 years existed and uh and people sought out to be martyred martyred they were seeking to be martyred they were seeking to give their life um to god uh, this is one of the this is the biggest sacrifice that you can give it's to sacrifice your own life um and so because christianity and christians were persecuted because people did not accept the christian faith and the christian people they they killed them um they tortured them and they killed them um uh, thanks be to God, there was a an emperor, Emperor Constantine, who came um, and he brought peace to Christianity. He made it legal, he made it accepted for people to be Christians. Um, but these people who found a path um, or who, who have seen others find this path of spirituality through martyrdom sought to find um, their own sacrifice that they can give. Um, although there was peace, they desired they desired to live with Christ. They desired to be with Christ, and um, the way that they found that was monasticism. Was to escape, you know, the 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 passions and the desires of the world, um, to flee into the desert, into the wilderness, um, and to and their life to Jesus Christ, to God, um, in solitude. And so, um, monasticism here. Um, is, is, is very important. It's, it's the showing of a deep uh, spirituality. It's showing um, the actions of a faith uh, that is true. You have to believe in something that is true um, to do what these people are doing. Um, and so we have saints, uh, the first examples of monasticism, um, of, as we see today, um, the likes of St. Anthony, Anthony the Great, um, or Abba Antonius Ali, um, who we call the father of all monks or the father of monasticism. Um, we have St. Pacomius um, or Abba Pacomius Terai uh, Mahir, or who uh, established communal monasteries. Um, we have uh, Abba Pauli or St. Paul, the first hermit. Um, and of course, uh, who, who we'll talk about later um, on, uh, St. Diana and the 40 women who establish what we know as first uh, to be the first convent. Um, and so we, we have the examples of these saints um, who in that time established uh, what we have monasticism as we have it today. Um, and so if we go on to the next slide, we can talk more about what is, you know, why should we support monasticism? Why should we support um, this idea of ascetic life or of uh, this, this type of sacrifice? And um, it's important to understand that monasteries um, are the foundation of our faith. Um, if uh, and when I say foundation of our faith, uh, there's there's four reasons here that we have listed. But but um, we have people who study theology, who study and practice uh, and, and think about the the depthness of what it means to know God. Um, but most of those people who have come up with these teachings um, were themselves monks or were themselves uh, came from uh, fleeing of the world. And it's important to understand that. Uh, the depthness of our commentaries, the depthness of our faith came from the commentaries of these people who not only sought to understand, but also sacrificed much of their life to, to, uh, to devote themselves to God. Theology means to know God. Um, and so uh, it's important to understand that these people, um, for example, St. John uh, Chrysostom or uh, Johannes Afwerk, um, himself was a was a monk, and he gave himself, um, and he sacrificed himself, and and uh, not only to to learn the Bible um, and to understand the Bible, um, but also to apply the Bible in his life and to live the gospel. Um, this you find in monasteries, and so the first reason um, that we say that monasteries are the foundation of faith is because in monasteries um, uh, we see the preservation of history. Um, in our in our in Eritrean history just in general, Eritrea has a great history of uh, what's either we call it Brana Mithahaft or parchment, um, what you know, books that are written written on parchment, um, and this presence or this history is recorded and and is uh, preserved by monks in monasteries. Um, to give an example, um, if you guys are familiar with, um, there's a a word of, um, that Lucyadid uh, has. And it's called Wa Ridi Abihera Romia, La Veta Christian, Reikua, I am a Kua wa Aka Kua, La Veta Christian. And we, we attribute that to Dutiarit, but this does not come from Dutiarit. This comes from a book called Mesafa Hirmi that Dutiarit quoted. 
Mitzahre uh, Herme, uh, oh, Herma, sorry, they say um, is, is one of the 15 or the 15th epistle written by St. Paul. Some say that. Um, and that's because in Romans chapter 16, verses 14, we find that, um, that St. Paul uh, talks about a person named um, Hermes um, or Herma. And um, he writes this book to Hermes called Mitzahre Herme. Where we find this text, what it is, Behere Rome, Levice Christian, Jericoa. And so, um, what we see here in this, this book, the only good translation of this book is found in Debra Vida. Um, and so, uh, our, our Gedams, right, our monasteries have preserved these texts that you cannot find anywhere else, that you cannot find in any library, that you cannot find. They are their own ancient libraries. Um, and likewise, traditions. Uh, you know, we, we perform Kadatia in every church everywhere, right? But why do we do the things that we do? Why do we uh, have the Tara'at that we do? Um, and, and, and are we doing it correctly? Sometimes we're not even doing it correctly. Um, but these, the, this Tara'at, this, this uh, tradition, we know is preserved in a Gadam. If you want to learn how to do, uh, if you're a diakon, priest, or whatever, you know, you want to learn how to perform Kadatia properly, you will find the, 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 uh, the proper performance of um, these these uh you'll find them in the Gadam. And so um, a monastery is the foundation of our faith because it preserves the texts and preserves our traditions. The next thing is it provides spiritual education. Um, now in ancient times, uh, people found education through the church, through uh, monasteries, through um, the, the educational institution was provided by the church. Um, and one of the reasons why is because it was beneficial for the monk to have their studies inside of the Gadam, rather than them leaving the Gadam and uh, being tempted by the world. Right? So they, they put these things in the, in the monasteries. Um, for example, we have Gwaibit. We have uh, the, the two important ones for, for like monastic life is Turgami Bit and as Mizbelit or Dasirit. Um, and so here they study, you know, they read a lot of books, but they study the, the explanation, the commentaries of those books. Um, they study the proper um, uh, traditions of liturgy, how to perform liturgy. Um, not only do we find these, uh, this type of education, but icons were painted in monasteries, scribes uh, would scribe in monasteries. Um, these were done by monks. Um, and I think the most important spiritual education that you find in a monastery is the practical spiritual spirituality, um, that by action, by that by living of the uh, living the gospel. Um, we talk about unceasing prayer. We talk about uh, being thankful in everything. This, this type of mindset, this type of attitude, this type of application of faith is found in a monastery. Um, and so uh, providing spiritual, edu spiritual education is one of another reason why monasteries are the foundation of our faith. Um, another thing is raising future clergy, most importantly, bishops um, and you know future uh, patriarchs and future bishops and the current bishops. These people come from monasteries. Um, these are monks who are ordained to become to serve in this in this way, um, and so uh, you know I hope you guys are following. But how many you know blessings that we have had just by uh, a bishop coming to us, um, Abuna Elias, and so um, by by his presence, by his active service, our church has grown immensely in just the last uh, um, year, and so um, we we need monasteries to cultivate and to you know, produce this in the future as well. Um, and I think one of the, a very important thing is the praying for our church. Um, as we know, as it says in James chapter five, uh, verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Um, prayer is something that we all should do. Um, as it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter five, verse 16, um, we must pray unceasingly. We must always be in prayer. Um, now, because of our different temptations, because of our different ways of life, because of the different things that we go through, we find a challenge in this. You know, um, our church commands us to pray seven times a day. Uh, many people pray. You know, and, we, and we, we strive for this, but of course, here we struggle with this. Um, but in a monastery, they are always in prayer. They're constantly in prayer. Um, I mentioned two saints. Um, St. Anthony the Great and St. Paul the Hermit, or uh, Bantonius and um, Abba Auli. Um, and there's a story about the two of them. 
when Saint Anthony the Great is in the desert, an angel comes to him and he says, "In the inner desert, in the inner desert, two days, two uh, days walking from here, you'll find a man um, whose whose feet the men of the world are not to meet to be on a footstool. Through his prayer, the world is kept in a right course, and the earth gives its fruit." Through him, the rain falls on the earth and the sun rises upon all the sinners of the earth. And because, he, because of his goodness, God bears all the creation of the children of men. Saint, this angel is talking to St. Anthony about St. Paul the hermit, the first hermit. And so what he's saying is the sun rises, the rain pours, uh, and God uh, bears all of, the, all of his children because of the prayers of this one man. This one man who dedicated his life to uh, solitude. For 70, 70 years, he did not see a person. Abba Pauli. And, um, and by his prayers, even though he's away from the church, even though he's not serving uh, the church the way we might think, by his prayers, um, we are get granted blessings from God. And so, likewise, um, the closest people we have to saints nowadays are those in the monasteries, are those in the convents. We are not just donating, donating our money for uh, just to build a building, but to provide a space for this type of service so that these people can pray um, uh, for us. Because we live and we wake up every day and we serve every day by their, by their prayers. And we are given a grace and a mercy by God by their prayers. And so um, hopefully we understand um, a little bit about monasticism and the importance in our faith. Um, and so with that, I'll uh, conclude um, this part. We might open it up to a discussion, but I'll pass it on to Diakon Petros. Thank you, Diakon Fulman. May you hear the word of life. That was a very inspiring, uh, actually, uh, message about the monasteries and also the, mon the monastic life itself. Uh, that uh, the monastic life is actually uh, part of our church, uh, a very like a foundational part of our church, uh, like it's a pillar of our church, not just uh, a certain group of people just go away from the world and like uh, don't have any connection with the rest of the world, but actually they are like part of our uh, strength and our like, sp especially the spiritual strength that our church has um, had throughout the year, especially during the times of tribulations, during the time of uh, heretics when uh, uh, many heretics try to attack our church uh, the monasteries have been a, a very like uh, strong for uh, for our church and uh, that is a very um, important fact that we should know uh, that it's actually our time now to give back to this uh, to these monasteries for all that they have done throughout the years so it is a very um, um, inspiring message that you have uh, delivered so thank you very much uh, before we continue with our uh, with the rest of our program, I'm gonna pass it back on to our brother Aaron. Uh, he's gonna give us uh, some updates on the donations, and uh, we'll be back shortly. Okay, thank you so much, brothers, uh, uh, brother Diakon Filmon, come on, brother Diakon Petros, Kalitis Madna, uh, beautiful lesson. Uh, yes, the GoFundMe actually is still active. A lot of people are donating. I just want to mention a few people uh, that donated. Um, some, a lot of them are anonymous, but um, someone donated one hundred fifty dollars, and another person donated a hundred dollars. Um, another person donated thirty dollars. Another a person by the name of Nebiath Nuguse donated a hundred dollars. Another person donated twenty-five. Wagahata Tsagai donated two hundred, uh, and now we are at one hundred fifty-seven thousand five hundred sixty. So our hope is maybe today. Uh, we're just complete 160,000 for the GoFundMe account. Uh, and we had some updates from Canada, um, the, the, some of the churches that have been donating. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to mention the churches once and I'll just give updates later on. Um, so from the Canada side, Kidanamarad, Edmonton, Canada, uh, they raised $36,000 of Canadian dollars and $2,000 of US dollars. Um, St. Mary Kitchener, uh, Canada, $22,000, uh, Canadian dollars. Kaddus uh, Mikhail, Toronto, $27,230, Canadian dollars. Kaddus Selassie Gulf, Canada, uh, they've raised, actually have a new update on that one. That's $18,220 <clears throat> uh, Canadian dollars and $1,500 US dollars. Uh, Kitchener, 
actually they uh, the numbers that I just told you actually has changed to thirty four thousand Canadian dollars instead of um, um, uh, instead of twenty two thousand. So they've uh, raised a lot more money. Uh, Calgary, Deborah Heil, Kibbs Mikhail, which Diego Petros is from, 13,680 Canadian dollars. Kibbs Gabriel, Vancouver, Canada, 6,000 Canadian dollars. Ottawa, Kibbs Gabriel, 6,000 Canadian dollars. St. Mary, Lond uh, London, Canada, 5,740 Canadian dollars. Uh, Mahabara, Abun Aragawi, uh, uh, 1,300 Canadian dollars. And from the US side, St. Mary, Columbus, Ohio, $50,000. Hamaranu uh, Kaddis Tamaram, Washington DC, thirty-five thousand six hundred sixty-five. Kaddis Salase, Holy Trinity, Washington DC, thirty-four thousand one hundred thirty-five. Debra Mehrat Kaddis Mikhail, San Rosa, California, twenty-four thousand dollars. Debra Sion Kaddis Tamaram, Atlanta, Georgia, twenty thousand dollars. Debra Mehrat Kidana Mehrat, San Diego, twenty thousand dollars. Debra Salam Medhanelam, Oakland, California, sixteen thousand dollars. Makana Hewitt, Kaddis Salase, uh, Sea Falls, South Dakota, 13,600. Deborah Menkrat, Kaddus Georgis, Charlotte, North Carolina, $13,000. Kaddus Gabriel, New, uh, New Jersey, US dollars of 12,800. 12, Kaddis Salase, San Jose, California, 11,000. Deborah Gizan, uh, Jesus, Philadelphia, $10,000. Deborah Srat, Kaddus Gabriel, Minnesota. St. Paul, Minnesota, 10,000. Lidata Mariam, Denver, Colorado, 8,400. Debra Gannett, Kirana Mret, Indiana Falls, 7,535. Kedus Kirkos, Kentucky, um, Louisville, Kentucky, 7,000. Merhan Alam, Michigan, 3,100. This is a number we have so far, so maybe there's more. But Kedus Gabriel, Los Angeles, 3,000. Debra Heil, Kedus Mikhail, Cincinnati, Ohio, 2,500. Baatamaram, Amarillo, Texas, 2,100. Abun Aragawi, Iowa, 7,000. Uh, total so far from the Canadian side, 160,000 Canadian dollars and uh, 110,000. That equals 110,000 US dollars. Sorry, that equals 110,000 US dollars. Uh, from the US side, we have $270,800. On the Gulf, Gulf and me, we have Currently, um, 157,560. We are at $550,490. Uh, 550, That's amazing, Xavier uh, Muskan. Let's keep the donations coming. Maybe tonight uh, we can just um, complete the 157 uh, up to 160 for the gold fund, and then we'll call it a night. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you, Arna. Uh, Arna. Uh, th that's really inspiring. That's really motivating. Uh, it's really nice to hear all those amounts uh, to be donated uh, for mothers. And yeah, let's keep it flowing. I mean, uh, it's just blessings upon blessings. So, Xavier, uh, Natom Kulans, Havana, Kabelina, we got give us uh, more. Um, so, uh, next, uh, before we go on, uh, to the next program, I will invite our I'll invite uh the Diakon Fumahona to sing for us a mesmore, uh, and then we'll uh go ahead with the rest of the program. Glory be to the Father, to the Son's Holy Spirit, now and forever, and it just come on in. The mesmore is Dimiana Kadis Kadis West Hamites. Demiana could do so, could do so with a mite. Demiana could do so, could do so with a mite. Was a mite, was a mite, was a mite, was a mite. Demian, I 
Thank you, our brother Diakon Fillmore and our Diakon uh, Tamaskan. Uh, may you and all of us hear the hymns of the angels. Uh, that was a uh, very beautiful mesmore. Um, our brothers were singing Dimianak Dist Wasamait, which uh, translates as uh, Dimiana the Righteous and Martyr. Um, uh, that's the, the translation. Uh, so it's been about. Um, Dimiana and not only Dimiana, but also the, the, the martyrs uh, as being righteous and also uh, uh, holy. Um, in fact, the Bible, if even um, our fathers, symbolize them with uh, the stars of the sky as they are the ones who lighten up the, uh, our church through, uh, through their uh, deeds and holy um, uh, um, works uh, that they have benefited all their life, their prayers. Um, have, has, has been an example and also um, a light for our spiritual life. And in fact, we call them the lights of our church as well. Um, with that uh, being said, um, from what we have um, uh, been learning so far, uh, especially what our brother Diak on Filmon has uh, taught us about the monastic life, um, uh, I, would, I would love to invite our sisters, uh, Lydia and also Milena to give uh, some uh, points about um, this uh, fact about monasticism and also about St. Dimiana in general. So I'll pass it uh, to them. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm the Son of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So um, thank you, Doug and Fulman. That was very informational. Um, I personally got a lot about out of it and um, it reminded me of also like another point why our um, our monasteries are so important is they are accessible to us. Not only are they like praying for us from afar, but if you guys have had the, the honor and the blessing of visiting any monastery, whether in the United States or in back home, um, in Egypt or in Eritrea, Ethiopia or Israel or anywhere, um, any monastery you, I, um, I, I know that you we all have been welcomed by the the monks there and like the uh, fathers and mothers there with such a fresh um, who gets with such a strong love from Christ of Christ and onto us. Um, I remember um, I had uh, the honor of visiting Saint Damiana Eritrean or or our monastery in Etha, and at the time they were um, in a time of Subai. I came and I knocked on the door 
and they were so welcoming. They sent, spent their time um, uh, just trying to make me feel welcome and knowing that I had come so far just uh, to see them. They um, opened up their monastery um, to me and uh, just so many other experiences visiting monasteries. You definitely get the sense that they're not, even though they are far away physically, uh, when you're there, they're not really far away and they really make an effort to make it accessible um, for uh, for anybody that wants to come visit. So that's a, that's a huge blessing for us um, that they're so close in spirit. Thank you, um, Maria Hafte, and um, thank you, Diego Fulman, for um, such an informational um, teaching. Um, personally, I um, have visited St. Damiana Gadam here in Georgia. Uh, it's about maybe like an hour and a half away. Um, I've went uh, a couple times, and it is a Coptic um, convent, but um, it's just amazing to see how um, how welcoming, as Lydia was saying, how welcoming the mothers there are um, and how much, like it's it's hard to explain almost how much love they have for not only the service that they do or the um, or for our Lord, but even the people that they don't know, like we met them for the first time, but it felt like almost like we were seeing them um, after maybe a day, like how, like we knew them already. Um, and it was almost hard to leave because it was just, they were just so welcoming, so nice. Um, everything they did for us was just really amazing. And um, I personally haven't went to um, the Garam and Ertra, but I'm sure that it wouldn't be any different if I were to go there. Um, and God willing, that we can all visit there one day. Um, but as far as the teaching that um, Piacon Filmon gave us, again, it was very informational. Um, I know a lot of people, um, including myself at one point, probably just thinks um, the only thing that makes um, monks different from priest or um, regular laymen is the fact that they don't um, marry. Um, but Dequan Philemon through his teaching really taught us that it's way more than that. And the um, things that our um, monastic fathers and mothers do and the Garams do are way more than just um, abstaining from uh, people. And it's more about conserving the church and conserving um, the sacraments, conserving everything, the sarat. Um, so thank you again, Dekon Shalom, for the amazing teaching. Uh, thank you, our sisters, Lydia and Milena. Uh, may you hear the word of life. Um, it is, I would, I would totally agree that uh, visiting uh, a monastery would be like a very uplifting event in our lives. Um, I think especially for anyone living outside of Eritrea or um, anywhere in the world would need some time to, uh, I guess, take some time for themselves alone uh, to just like, you know, uh, reflect on themselves and contemplate and also um, recharge like their uh, mental uh, energy. And yeah, it's it's actually a very uh, big blessing to be, uh, uh, to be visiting a monastery. Um, with that being said, uh, sometimes, you know, like, it's very important that we also know like the history of like the the saints uh in our lives like not just like know their names and like basically oh yeah about saint demian and that's it but um you hear sometimes people naming a child after like a certain saint and then you know you might ask the parent or like even the child himself like what's the meaning of that name or like who is that or, like who are you named after like they may not know the the story of the saint right and like knowing the history or this the um saint the same story is can help us like uh, make them our role models uh we can try to mimic uh their lives and we can try to follow them we can try to like the more we know about them is like the more we get uh, our relationship with them is strength right so today we're talking about like saint dimiana and uh, some of us may not know about who truly saint dimiana is and like, like what makes her like so famous in our church obviously older saints are like honored um uh, before God and um, like all the honor that he has given them it's because they have done something for him right God loves us all of us equally but the saints in return 
have loved God, God uh, like more than anything else in this world. They have loved God more than the world, more than any, anything they could they could possess in this world. Um, so that being said, um, it would really be a very important thing to take this chance and know more about Saint Dimiana. Um, so like, who is Saint Dimiana? Uh, it's just uh, the question that we need to answer uh, and know more about her. So maybe like uh, uh, our sister Lydia, if you can uh, elaborate more on that, uh, I can pass it on to you. Thank you, Doug and Petros. Um, you're absolutely right. A lot of times we hear uh, certain saints' names um, being called a lot of times, but we don't take the time to learn about them and their lives, and it's a big blessing for us. Um, so uh, just to say, if we don't know already, and we've been um, learning about Saint Amanda all day, and um, even till this day, we see her hand um, on, on us and our church, um, but just to say a little bit about her, um, um, I believe that one from one had mentioned the era of the martyrs and St. Domena was actually born in the era of the martyrs in Egypt. And she was the only child uh, to uh, Christian parents. Not only were they Christian parents, but they were also of nobility. They were of great wealth. And for, as it says in the gospel, um, uh, it is, it's harder for a rich man to pass through, um, it's harder for a camel to uh, pass through a needle's eye than a rich man to enter into heaven. So you can see um, their their holy life um, with um, with their nobility and with their wealth, how much, how much they really did live a, a holy life. Um, and so she um, grew up um, in the love of God. She grew up learning about the scriptures. She grew up reading and spending time in, um, and growing in the love of God. So when she became of age, um, uh, just like anybody, just like any of our parents, her parents wanted her to get married. And her father um, her father wanted her to get married to one of, uh, a man of nobility. And she actually, um, it's a common thing, you guys might hear parents uh, here in America, they ask for, um, they ask their children, do you want me to pay for your wedding? Or do you want me to pay for your house um, or your, your livelihood. And say, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty common. But um, St. Damiana, she said, you know, I don't want to get married. I want to continue my life consecrated um, to Christ, my beloved. And she chose um, to um, ask her father if he can actually buy, um, furnish a home outside of the city for her and 40 uh, then I get or 40 virgins um, that eventually would uh, be martyred alongside her. And so um, in that time, um, they had a, by the grace of God, they had a beautiful place to consecrate themselves to God, to dedicate themselves to God and to continue growing amongst each other um, in that uh, communal monastic life. Um, so they lived a peaceful life, but of course, um, there is no life without a struggle. And they were met with struggle um, when the Emperor Diocletian um, challenged uh, Demiana and her um, and her and the 40 virgins. Um, and this is the time where she was really challenged. And not only was she challenged, but the whole um, it's it's the era of martyrs. Um, and her her martyrdom became a witness to everybody. So when she was being tortured, um, finally she was almost to the point of death and she was told, um, she was taken to, to prison. And in that prison room, um, St. Michael, the archangel, uh, came to her and he actually healed her. And all the people in, in that prison, when they saw her full, fully able and um, re renewed in her flesh, chose to um, lead a life like hers. So she was an example and a witness to Christ, and that's what she always wanted. So we said, you know, she chose uh, the house over the wedding, um, but she did get her wedding at the end of the day um, uh, in the heavenly kingdom. And um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said to her at the end of her life, when she was finally martyred for his sake, he asked, he told her, have courage, my chosen one. I have prepared for you the crown of your wedding in heaven. Your name will be remembered forever as it will be the cause of, for many miracles. And in this place, a great church will be built to honor your blessed name. Um, so we remember her today. 
and um, she became not only for herself, um, but for uh, those who witnessed her and her um, virgins today. And we see also a similarity in um, our mothers as well, because a big thing that um, Saint Juliana and the virgins did was they had they spent their time um, they spent their time um, creating handmade things as well, and they they not only spent their time praying but also created things that uh, would glorify God and that would be of use to the church. Um, so her name um, and her and her works are what we remember today. Um, we remember also um, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 18, it says, But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And like we said, we're still seeing her. We're still seeing her works today, her miracles on um, our, our church. Um, and um, I would love to hear also, I'm sure you guys have a lot of things to share about Cynthia Manna. This was just, this was just a brief um, introduction to her life um, and glory be to the Father and Son, Holy Spirit, one God. I mean, thank you for the opportunity to share. Thank you, uh, Lydia. May you hear the word of life. Um, yes, um, it was, uh, that's a very also inspiring story about Saint Dimiana, um, especially uh, the choice that she made actually, that when her father asked her, you know, but um, the, the fact that she chose uh, or she asked him to build her a convent where she can live together with her, um, um, I guess, sisters in a um, secluded life from the rest of the world where they can constantly worship God and also um, serve God in a very uh, holy and um, pure way. So that was, that's a very um, kind of touching way because sometimes when we are asked what we want to receive from like elders or our parents the things that we might choose are may not be things that might benefit us or also um are kind of spiritual but uh they're just kind of um just want wants but not even needs i i would say so um um it's a very good lesson for us that you know what the choices that we make uh, are uh, have a very vital impact on our lives um, so that's something that I, I, I can take from St. Dimiana's story. Um, maybe um, before we go ahead uh, with the rest, uh, we'll be back uh, about the story and also to discuss more about, about her story. Uh, but I will also return it back to our brother, Aaron. He's going to give us more updates on the fundraising. Uh, so Aaron, uh, the floor is yours. She, thank you so much, Deacon Howie. <clears throat> um... Yes, uh, it's actually really doing well. Uh, I just updated some of the numbers from Canada. Uh, we have <clears throat> now total from US Canada side. So Israel is doing their own thing. Uh, Dubai is doing their own thing. But it, since we're in, in the same um, diocese, you know, uh, US and Canada, obviously the, the GoFundMe is, you know, around the world, everybody's doing the GoFundMe. But <clears throat> including the GoFundMe, we have now total $554,000, uh, $555,000, close to $555,000. So that is really amazing. Um, and one of the things that I, I want to mention is, you know, the the, the cloth that we wear, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this um, everywhere. Uh, it's beautiful. And the one thing I liked about this uh, is the moms, the nuns, you know, the our mothers, when they make this, they actually are praying. They're praying, they're saying, you know, whoever is wearing this vestment or th this cloth, may you uh, cover him with your grace, may you cover him with your, or her, with your with your abundant love. So when you're wearing this, you're actually being part of the the the, the moms, the, the nuns in the, the, the monastery. So, you know, uh, the priests, they look so beautiful wearing all that um, vestment in, in church, the kabba, you know, in, 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 in the fathers. The, the 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 bishops and the the, the archbishops and and, and the patriarchs so it's, it's it's amazing what they are doing and also one thing is now girls actually have you know uh, someone they could actually look up to they could actually go back home and talk to the the the, the woman and receive the love of christ the pure love which which is you know what you know although you live in america although you live in europe or uh, you know us 
you know, when you go there, you you feel the peace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the peace of the saints. So this is a great opportunity because it's actually in the city because now it's more accessible for a lot of people. It's more accessible for a lot of people. And uh, obviously, you know, because, uh, you know, we're not really in tune with hardships, you know, living in America, living in the U.S. and in Canada, you know, small things really bother us. So it, the, the monastery being in, in, in the city is actually a plus because now all the girls that go, all, all the women that go to the to the U.S., to the Adi to visit, they can actually access it. So uh, I'm loving this conversation. Please continue. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, thank you, Brother R. Uh, yeah, it is once again a very inspiring thing to see all those numbers uh, right, uh, rise up. Uh, so let's keep them moving on. Uh, if you're if you haven't already uh, donated, please do go ahead and do so. Um, you can do it easily through your phone, as uh, uh, Arun mentioned. At the bottom left corner, there's a QR code, or below in the descriptions, you can find a link to go to the to go to the Go GoFundMe uh, website, and you can donate as much as you can. Uh, if you have already done so, thank you very much. Um, may God accept your donation. And also, please remember to share it to your friends, to your family, to whoever that you can, uh, so that uh, we can have a more network uh, donors. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll be, uh, so let's maybe uh, return back to our conversation about the life of St. Dimiana. Um, uh, maybe if you, uh, Milena, have to, if you want to add a couple of things into the uh, history of um, uh, St. Dimiana, and also with that, I also invite you to continue on with the history of uh, um, if you can add more to the history of Saint Dimiana. Thank you, um, Dr. Howie, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I believe Lydia covered pretty much everything. I know um, we don't have with the short time we have to speak um, with everyone. Um, there's, of course, much more that we would all love to say. Um, but it's like how um, in Tigrinya they say, um, like just a short summary or um, a small amount of what we could um, tell. Um, but one thing that I love about uh, St. Damiana or her story is um, often a lot of people might, might think, um, I know even myself at one point and lots of other um, female servants, kind of feel almost if they, as if they don't have a place um, in the church or they feel uncomfortable serving in the church um, because it seems like um, it's more um, towards men or more towards um, males. But hearing St. Dimana's story and hearing um, how there's a whole gadam or churches in her name um, and being able, when we visited the gadam um, here in Georgia, it was truly a blessing because it showed how much that um, females or women can actually participate in the church and um, be a part is of of the service. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Thank you, Milena. Uh, yeah, and actually, you know, like since even throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, um, uh, women or females they have had like a tremendous impact on the life of our church. Uh, they have done so much, uh, you know especially like the one that we all um, love and um, call our mother is the Virgin uh, uh, Mary herself. Um, and she, yes, uh, being a woman, she has become the boast of the of the virgins as Saint Ephraim in the Wudda or uh, veneration of Saint Mary of Friday that as he mentions, right? So truly um, things have changed from the ultimate in, in, in the New Testament. So we see uh, um, Saint Feven, um, um, who used to aid uh, Saint Paul in, uh, as, as she's mentioned in Romans chapter, um, towards the end, I believe. Um, yes, and throughout the history of the church, may, we have had many saints, great saints, uh, female saints, uh, who have had many impacts uh, throughout um, the church and the spiritual life, like Saint Arsema, Christos Semra, uh, and many others, and obviously Saint Dimiana, whom we're talking about right now. Um, with that being said, next, I just want to uh, say like a brief uh, history, like our brother Diak on um, Philmon at the beginning, uh, he did mention mostly about uh, the monastic life and uh, how important it is. Uh, but uh, with that, I just want to say like a brief story of uh, the establishment of uh, the 
monastery of St. Demiana back home in Eritrea and how it was actually um, established. Um, so we, we know that the monasteries have been like part of church uh, for many centuries. Um, they're the pillars and the sounds, uh, the pillars for the sound and correct teaching of our church. Uh, they have preserved uh, the dogma, the heritage of our church. Uh, many uh, texts like they have done a lot of this. Um, so as a convent, especially the St. Dimiana convent, um, or known as Devla de Nagel, St. Dimiana, uh, this was actually a convent which opened uh, back in 2016 in Asmara uh, through the permission and blessing of the Holy Synod of uh, Eritrea. And above all, um, what's the basic goal of this convent? It's uh, to, to have a life of prayer. That's the most important or that's the most prioritized goal of a monk is to have a constant relationship with God. Um, it is a holy place where our mothers are pray for the world, um, our country, and for the safety of all um, the people uh, in the world. Uh, our mothers, some of the um, extra things that our mothers also do is that they take care of orphans, uh, the elderly. Uh, these are people who uh, do not have like uh, children or who do not have any one to take care of, to take care of them, uh, especially children, orphans. Uh, who, who've lost their parents. Uh, we see um, many cases as that. Uh, so their plan is that if they're able to accomplish or to uh, basically accomplish, yes, this uh, mission or project that uh, which is on hand right now, they will be more functional and they will be more able to um, um, execute these plans, God willing. So this is also to uh, tending uh, Yes, tending to the ill through uh, a clinic. Uh, and our brother Aaron also mentioned the, to guide women, young women, to lead their families to a true Christian life. Um, so this will be a very important institution um, where uh, it can change the, the life uh, of a nation, of the world. Uh, women can have like a place where can they, they can go, sit down and spend more time comfortably where they can learn about about their faith uh, without having uh, to fear about anything, uh, a place where they can feel like more comfortable uh, to learn about their faith, to learn more about spiritual life, and so that they can go back to their families, to their children, and uh, make a, a change that way. Especially uh, in the Saint um, Saint Dimiana's uh, convent, uh, we've had. Um, Many faithful who have attested to the impacts of our mother's prayers. Um, we've seen many miracles and we have seen also many tamrat, um, um, uh, which have been performed by our uh, mothers. Um, before the, um, going on with the rest of the program, um, I will invite our sister Lydia to sing for us a, another Muslim. Uh So Lydia, Aftana, if you can hear me. I'll pass it on to you. Okay. So the mesmer that we're gonna sing is called Abo Um, So please sing also, there's um, an English side or English translation to the mesmer, so we'll sing together. And this is Simbasi Amin Nahabir Nanizam. Abba, <laughs> Sale Yulana Naha Adu Vasalana Sale Yulana Naha Adu Vasalana Sale Yulana Naha Adu Vasalana Saint Fathers in the Mount 
And within the monasteries, St. Fathers in the mountains. And within the monasteries, pray for us so that we may dwell in peace. Pray for us so that we may dwell in peace. Uh -huh. Pray for us so that we may dwell in peace. Pray for us so that we may dwell in peace. Abba wicked Sanu, Ladabra wicked Hana. Ha <laughs> Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and God. Thank you, uh, Lydia. Uh, may you hear the hymns of the angels. Um, so as I was uh, expecting, uh, explaining uh, our mothers in the Saint Dimiana convent, uh, they have actually uh, been able to uh, make uh, many like different vestments and clothings for uh, the patriarch, as our brother Alan was explaining, uh, for the bishops. Uh, in fact, uh, if you can see here in the picture of uh, uh, of our uh, late uh, His Holiness uh, Awunak Erlos. Uh, may his blessings be with us all, uh, with the new, newly bishops that he anointed, and also with the other bishops uh, together at the Holy Synod. As you guys can see, this very glorious uh, clothings and vestments, uh, which have been, uh, they have all been made by our mothers uh, in the in the monastery. So uh, within this very limited amount of space, if they can do like all this work, if they can uh, help um, make all these vestments throughout uh, for for all the priests and deacons and all the faithful in the world, how much do we think they will be able to accomplish if they had like a bigger space, a larger space where they can accomplish um, many things? So it is very important for us to uh, to note and also see like the beauty that they have that they are um, um, clothing our church with. Uh, so in addition with that, they also do like uh, painting and curving wooden crosses, uh, like handheld crosses for the priests. Uh, they also translate. Um, spiritual books from Arabic, especially um, to Tigrinya, so that all the faithful can learn uh, and read and benefit from those uh, books, um, teaching different religious courses um, and different many other tasks, uh, which that even in the future, uh, which can be uh, planned and executed if they have a very large space uh, where they can do all this uh, um, uh, work and um, uh, at the end of it, we are the ones who are benefiting from from this. So, anytime you're planning to buy a new Sadaqadan or Kedan Havisha, uh, you got a place where you can buy it. Our brother Arun was actually showing us his Sadaqadan. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful one uh, with crosses all over the place. Um, we even remember from the story of uh, Emperor Constantine when uh, at the time at the first time when he was going to war with his enemies, the Persians, I believe. Um, an angel of God actually came to him and he told him that if he made the sign of the cross on the vestments or like on the armors of, of his soldiers and his horses, that he will be able to defeat all his enemies by the power of the cross. So as you, as you guys know, our, our fathers, the priests, um, um, in our church, especially the cross, you can see it all over the place. So, and our mothers are actually incorporating that uh, beauty, that uh, architect, or like that design into this Tzadakadan or Tzadakadan Havisham Aletiu. And it's a, actually a very beautiful thing for us to, um, when we buy of them, when you go buy from um, any market, 
um, any like it could be anywhere else. It's just for your own benefit. But when you actually go and buy this uh, cloth from Saint Dimiana, first you're benefiting the monks there, and mostly you're the one, or we are the ones who are benefiting from this uh, because at the end of the day, like our brother mentioned, um, as they make that cloth, they pray. They don't just make it. It's not just they don't just make it for the sake of money. Uh, and it's not just simply about trading, but it's actually, you know, they're passing on their blessings, their prayers through that. And the, when we buy it from them, we're um, helping the, mo the monastery to actually um, keep going uh, to grow more and more financially. And um, and we're helping the monks to have like, uh, you know, more hope that they can actually realize that, you know, our people are on our side and they can be motivated to do more and more for ours. So please, um, if you have the chance to do that, um, you have a place where you can uh, buy um, all these things from uh, um, next time. So God willing, uh, keep that in your mind. Uh, next, um, we will have um, a very inspiring video, um, a testimony from um, our, our mother, um, who is the head of the monastery, uh, we will show you that and I'll pass it on to our sister Milena uh, for that. Thank you again, um, Dad um, Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, I want to start off again by greeting everyone. Um, um, fathers, priests, brothers, deacons, um, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope everyone is doing well and um, in full health. I also would like to take the time before I start um, speaking about anything, just to thank everyone um, who's, who has participated in making this program possible, um, from the smallest um, to large participation, um, and also for giving all of us the opportunity to participate as well. Um, being able to participate in this program is truly um, a blessing more than I can put in words. And it's um, all of our hopes and prayers that God's, God grants us success today um, in our work and, and the work that we plan to do in the future. Um, there's not really much left to say since all of my wonderful um, brothers and my sister Lydia has pretty much covered everything and um, teaching us about the Gadam, explaining um, what monotheism is. Um, the purpose of the Gadam, why the Gadam is in the city and not um, uh, in the, the countryside or far away from the city, um, about our mothers, what they plan to do, um, what the money is going for, just so that we're not just saying, just give us money, um, so that you understand why um, and what the money is going to. Um, and not only just through this program, but this program has been going on um, since one o'clock in the morning, um, Eastern time at least. By the time I was going to sleep yesterday, they um, were starting in Dubai. So this program has been going on for about almost 18 hours. And it's truly a blessing to see how much um, change we're making just by doing something simple, just by giving a few hours of our time um, to raise awareness and raise money and raise funds for um, the get them and all the great purposes that the money is gonna go to. Um, we all recently watched the um, documentary on the Gadistimiana Gadam and the um, mothers that Liz Hantuado uh, posted via YouTube. And um, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure there's a link on the GoFundMe account and it's all over Facebook, all over YouTube. So um, it's about like an hour, almost two hour video. Um, I know speaking for myself and for many others that I know that watched the video, it truly touched our hearts truly touched our insides. Um, and it just invites you even to watch it over and over again, to see what their daily life looks like, to see the troubles that they go through, to see the hardships that they're facing um, just due to not having an, um, a right amount of space to be able to do nothing but serve um, our Lord. They're not asking for money to use it for their own use, but it's really the money that we're giving to them, they're giving it back to us in a way. Um, it may not be back in, um, in, in money, but it's in a good book through prayer, through um, through vestments, through all those things. It's, it's going back to us. So really, when we're giving, we're giving back to us in a way. Um, I'm going to invite 
uh, everyone to watch the video. Uh, it kind of speaks for yourself or speaks for itself, excuse me. Um, it's just a small snippet, about three minutes long, of Emina uh, Walatamaska really explaining um, how, like, what are some of the most happiest days of her life at the, of her life at the Gadam and some of the most difficult. Um, that part of the video kind of, um, it really touched everyone's heart. Um, I know I saw it over social media over and over ever since it came out to today. Um, the video is in Tigrinya, but we've, um, by our small uh, we've translated it to English and it has English subtitles at the bottom. So um, without further ado, I'm going to invite all of you to watch the video with me. تازي حب فلتنا ما علتكوها ما مسرات دور جناقل أبي إرترا زي حمدي اتهمر جبلتنا ما علتكن بزوج مرة حليف حق مزرع ما نسي بزي فتنا زي حلف نجاري يلا فتنا عبد الله نقول لها نا بروح نجاري عن حد ما علتها ما علتت تحت رأت ملا لسات مزأن الأمر كابزقات أمان تني عباش يقر أبي هو تيون كله بزيه سئل خوينا تنبر ماليتي كابزن دك أن حنتي تجني أتبلني أما هي تجني أي ما دارج أنا مشت كرخ بكي لا نه نو مشت هيت أن حني لا تني دهار مشت هيت أن حني مسؤولة تني أما قد نكرخ بالله ندور كنا في حنتي جزاء تغش كل خوينا نتقلي عز أن حناني بزحت نعم كاب كسين جبراني لنا نبذنا إن دكشت ما تحوك عشات أنا هني أما ودعت أنا بحن تجزا كفت ما سبلكو كم زي شقاقة بحد شيرو نتايلة شقاقة كنت أريد الله تعي مدرسة أريد الله ولا حن تغنى عز إلها حرة إلها تنهج أو جحب إلها وسأتها أمريرة كبدت أنا تسلط أني حاتني مرت تالية أنا نحاله حيز صخيد دل خو كله جنس أني حاتني أبتاو أنت آ أبي هو تيزير سعمل أخصب وكوني سمعني هو بزعسه بشاء دام الأخ يعطوا يخد لنا خيل خون قلنا تسلط نيتا قلنا ملأك ما أنا أتوسع أنا مزيئة يكون أنسي تقول عتي أسوأ لها تغن تزاريب وحرية بهالي بدر بهالي دي ري ما سبلتني قص إلى نافتة صلتها بدي حل وحافيلة قال لي أنت يكون نيروق ما خيلة تحن لا تني كده كبت معلتي أبي هو ت بدي فك تخوين هزبنا زبل كل معالتي تخوينو تخويني ودي نمت صلي بوت هاي السال زبل كل معالتي كل وزيب مرة تذكرنا ذاك زاول لا تجي أسي يري أدو خون ناب جزا كنت صلي بين أدو تعزي أس ترغب تخون إلى حسب يا بحق إيه مرة تيو مرة يرنا قرب هذا كابتا ديك أني أدبا لتني ساقم جي أجير الزق قال في فكواوي كام جي أجير الزق زفا له وعابك زي أبيهرا كل مزي بك أتحسبني ولا غدا في رهري أخام هذا أي كلني أصحاب جي كل مزي أنا عايز ذكر زي أمرة تي أبيه وثي مرة رجح لفكوا ما عالت زي أيا إشي أبيهر إما لسامو ناي كل حكم سألت كمان جزء أخر يعني زي أبيهر ماشي لسا استعجت اتس الليله تعجي انا املا خاطر ولا معلتي كترك انا ون عيني كريه شعوخهم تفدخو حسبي مالتي نفسي قلتي ان تنكبتي
some of the few things or some of the hardest things that um, emotionally is um, hard for just one of the mothers, but just seeing how by this one story, how emotional um, Imina got really spoke um, to many people, including myself. Um, and I feel as if this um, video here um, should really encourage us all to do our part, whether it's um, not just by money, but to be with them um, and give them uh, Mora, like to support them and let them know that they have, they have, we have their backs that we're with them, willing to help them with um, whatever it is that they need. Um, St. Isaac the Syrian wrote that God does not grant a great gift without a great trial. Um, so as much as um, these mothers are going through right now, through um, these donations that we're giving and through the prayers that um, our fathers and the churches, um, and of course their prayers as well, um, God willing, we'll be able to see them have um, their dream, to have that get on, to have that convent um, built very soon. And God willing that we can go um, one day and visit as well. Um, I want to take this time to um, invite everyone to use the QR codes at the bottom of the screen um, or the GoFundMe link or the PayPal link to um, donate any amount that your heart or conscious um, allows you. Um, and please, if uh, you can also share, share it with your um, friends, family, um, to anyone. Uh, as uh, Aaron said earlier, this is the season of giving. Um, so even your friends, whether it's like your work um, friends, your school friends, your church friends, um, please just share it um, and share this link to them as well so that they can understand what uh, cause we're raising this, um, these funds for um, and why. Uh, we're doing it. So again, thank you, um, Tia Petros and everyone uh, for giving me the chance to um, show you guys this video. And thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Elena, Milena Hafte. Um, it's a very touching uh, story to hear, uh, especially from our Amina uh, Awila Tamiskal. This is actually an inviting uh, um, or a calling for us to be able to wipe our tears away, um, not just to listen and uh, stay and do nothing, but um, any amount that we can donate, um, any support that we can give, um, if you can let them know that we are on their side. Um, yes, that's what's going to wipe their tears off. Uh, this is not only uh, the tears or um, the hardship that Amina is facing, it's the hardship of all the nuns living there uh, who can actually do more uh, but are limited uh, be, um, because of space um, to to only only like very few things that they are doing as of now so again this is a um, a blessed call for all of us to participate in this blessing um, and may God especially we have to know that um, as, lo as long as it is not given to us uh, from God um, we cannot be able to give to others. So, and obviously God, God has given us a something that we can give back to him. It is only from what he has given to us that we give back to him. And let, let us not think that we are giving God something that we own. It's actually something else. It's actually the other way around. It's, um, it, it's what he owns, he gave to us and we give back to him for what, from what he gave us. So let's all pray about this. Let's all pray to God. Uh, to enable us to do more, um, uh, to support um, our mothers and our church in general. Um, and glory be to God. Uh, so finally, as we are nearing towards the end of our program, um, I'll invite our brother Arun to give us any more updates again, and uh, we'll be uh, closing soon. Thank you so much, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, this was a very good presentation. I'm sure a lot of youth are touched by this, um, uh, and I hope all of us will contribute. Uh, either way, the the monastery will be built. But are we gonna gonna be in this history making? Are we gonna be part of this history making? A lot of people are, you know, uh, doing a lot of things nowadays. Um, but at the end of the day, is God has willed it, and it's gonna happen. But Mina uh, and uh, uh, the other. Uh, uh, nuns actually were actually in the program earlier this uh, morning and they were 
they were so happy to, to see the, the 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 care and the love <clears throat> that a lot of a lot of people are showing to them and it, it should be the other way around it should be like we we are so happy for the, for uh, for them to trust us in this and to bring us into this um uh great calling of you know this is a small thing that we're doing uh Naimea, chapter 2 verse 20 he said so i an- answered them and said to them the god of heaven himself will prosper us therefore we his servants will arise that's all we could do uh so to finalize our gofundme uh, account um we're, it's still going to be open so uh you know you have a chance to to donate so we are at final um tally for today uh we are at $157,710. So this is about 20, we added $23,000 on GoFundMe uh, just in one day. Th- this is amazing because, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the money is coming, you know, within the churches, but GoFundMe is actually doing it. So we hope uh, a lot, all of you will, will donate and be part of this great calling. May God bless you. Thanks so much. Yes, I have the total uh, from, you know, US and Canada plus GoFundMe. Uh, we have $555,000, $555,000. Um, it's amazing. More than, more than a half a million dollars. So uh, we still have a great way to go, but this is great. So um I pass it to you, Abuna. Um, <clears throat> before I take over, I wanted to give a chance uh, both Diakon Tamesgan and Gebra Meskal um, to say a word, and then I will uh, give the, the final word and we'll close with prayer. Diakon Tamesgan and uh, Gebra Meskal. Yeah, thank you. It was amazing. Thank you, Aboashi. Um, like we did Your not. Is... Oh. Okay, hold on. Uh, we did uh, nothing. Uh, it's just we wanna be part of the blessing. Uh, we want everybody to remember us in their prayer, and we are uh, we are just beginning. This is not uh, our. Our uh, last fundraising, we want to build our future monastery. Uh, we're going to invest in this monastery because we see a big, big uh, uh, future in this monastery for our country, for our religion. And I would uh, recommend everybody after we build it to visit our mothers. Uh, monastery and I'm excited to to be part of it too thank you boys thank you living to and thank you everybody who participate in this uh, fundraising event program thank you boys are you there Right. Right. Mazamran, Savat Wangel, Agalgalti, Kab Zahavez, Savzana Asse, Abzimed of the Havel Kumpulu, Yavira Amlach, our handwork is Havel Kum. Mazahavim Saleh is in the Hazer Halu, Mizavi Hirilak Poho, Nisun, Sanai Gibri, Fedio Evil, Mazahavim Saleh. 
10 ተጫዋት ወጥሮ 10 ሸዋት እሞ ሎሚ ዝገበርናዩ ነተን ብፍቃደን ነዳያን ዝኾና አዴታትና ጎደለን ምምላይ ጎደሎ ጥራ ይኮነን ምንም የብለነ ንብጋስ ይኑሩ ስለዚህ ንልዕሊ 10 እንዳርጋ 10 ሸምንተ ሰዓት ዘቀጸለ ይ ተጀሚሩ እንበር አይተፈጸመን እግዚአብሔር አምላክ እንብገስ ከለና አምላክ ሰማይ ከቅናዓልና ከቅናዓልና ኢሞ ንሕና ባሮቱ ተንሲእና ኽንዓይ ኢና ዝብል ኃይለ ቃል ካብ ትንቢተ ነህሚያ ምዕራፍ ክልተ ቁጥር 10 ዘሎ መሰረት ገርና ተበጊስና አምላክ ሰማይ ቅንዓልና ኸአ እነሆ አብ መደምና ምዝዛም በጽሕና ደጊምና ንኹልኹ አብ ዝመደብ ዝተሳተፍኩ ካምውሃድ ከሳብ ምልጋስ ካምብራቅ ሳምራብ ካብሰሚን ከሳብቡ ኮታ ቤተክርስቲያንና ቡሙሉኡ ዘውሃሃደ ጥርኑፍ ስራህ ውህድ ስራህ ስራህ መንፈስ ቅዱስ ዝኾነ ናብ ፍጻሜ በጽሕና አለና እግዚአብሔር አምላክ ዘሃብኩ ማህተ ሰማይ ሀብተ ምድሪ ሀበልና አቶም ዘሃቡ ኢዶም ንመሃብ ኢዶም ይዘር እግዚአብሔር የምላአሎም እና ህዝብና አንታ ይኮኑ ዝብል ቃል ናልባት አቶም ዘሃብኩ እጁን ህዝብ ይኹምሞ አብዙ ቁጽር ዘይ ተታአቱ ሐደራ ነብር ያንኔልና እግዚአብሔር አምላክ ባርኩ በእንግሊዝኛ ህጽር ይለ ከብሎ ይ in the name of the father this in the name of the father and the son and the and the holy spirit one god amen grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ beloved fathers mothers brothers and sisters we have started this fundraiser with the theme verse from nehemiah 2 chapter 2 verse 20 the god of heaven himself will prosper us therefore we his servants will arise and build as our team verse status all of our uh, all of the children of this holy church all over the world from east to west and from north to south have worked with one accord and have gotten to this stage he who has pity on the poor lends to the lord and he and he will pay back what he has given um this fundraiser event started 1:30 a.m. today um december 24 dubai time and here we are um 8:36 pm eastern us time almost 18 hours through the gofundme over the time we have raised over 22 23000 in addition to the amount raised previously from each church the amount hmm, the amount of money raised has been added to added up to the total of um 555k or 555 500 um 500 um 555000 um uh, st paul messaged to the corinthians saying now may he who supply seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to god for the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to god while through the proof of this ministry they glorify god for the obedience of your confession 
to the gospel of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 to 13. Truly, your gift will supply the need of the needs of the saints. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the people and servants who took part in this service. May God give you the desire of your heart and repay, repay you bountifully. This is the beginning of many giving events to come. Once again, God bless you. I challenge everyone with that last clip to take uh, to take um, your responsibility to make it your responsibility to organize within your local church and be one of the people that they count. Be one of the people that wipes their tears. While we are here, they should never cry. Again, I thank you all. God bless you. May God um, bless us all. And hopefully we'll see you with other um, giving events like this. Thank you. Uh... Uh, really appreciate your uh, insightful words and message uh, for all of us youth. Um, it is very inspiring and may God help us to um, um, fulfill uh, his commandment uh, by lending and by donating uh, to his church. Uh, with that being said, uh, this will be our final uh, program for today. Uh, thank you all uh, to all of our viewers, especially to all of our coordinators who have been awake uh, from 1 a.m. Um, uh, in the morning. Um, they have been coordinating all the programs or all the fundraising events that have been taking place uh, globally. So um, Africa, Europe, uh, Canada, America, Dubai. Uh, so, and as we all know, these are these have very different time zones. So they have been on the um, awake and also Israel. Uh, so thanks be to God for granting us this time to gather also. So this has been a uniting event also, not only like to support our mothers, but we've been able to gather as a church for a same, for the same um, uh, accomplishment. So I, I, I don't want to add anything else uh, above what uh, Abuik Ashi has said. Um, and I'll, I'll just pass it on uh, back to Abuik Ashi and they'll close off uh, our program for today uh, with a prayer and may God accept our, our donations. Um, thank you very much, and have a blessed night, everyone. Um, let me give an opportunity for Milena Bale to say something. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Abek Ashi. Um, I just wanted to say something after we watched the video uh, together um, that I didn't have the chance to say before I gave the um, floor back to Diagon Petros. Um, what I want to say is just, I wanted to point out to everyone how um, everyone, including myself and um, all of my brothers and sisters here with me today, we spend countless hours, days, months, years um, working to build a nice life or a nice um, future for ourselves, for our family, for um, our community. Um, but these things are things that we don't carry with us in our next life. Um, but these mothers are working for such a great cause. And um, yes, we are helping them, but um, really we're helping build the church. And that church is something that is going to live forever. So we're going to pass, these mothers will pass, but the church, the Gedan will still be there forever for generations and, and generations to come. So us giving um, to this Gedan is really making a difference, not for um, just the mothers, but for the church in general. Um, so really let's ask ourselves if we can give um, so much time and so much dedication for things that are not gonna mean anything to us in our next life, why not give that same attention? Why not give that those same efforts to something that's gonna live on for forever, for eternity? Um, 
So that's just what I wanted to add. Thank you, Avikashi. You're welcome. Thank you. Shall we pray? All right. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, the Son, and in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. <clears throat> Let's pray our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be, thy, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. O our Lady Mary, uh, our, O our Lady, as Saint Gabriel, greet you. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you, true virgin in conscience as well as body. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of you. From Holy Mary, the God bearer. Pray that your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, may he forgive us our sins. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Abu Gashi, for that closing prayer. Um, thank you, everyone, for staying with us for this time. Um, hopefully to see you again um, in another event. and. Um, have a great night, everyone, and thank you, everyone here, uh, together with me. Yeah, when Thomas again. ماشي بزي فتنا زحلف نجاري يلا فتنا هبز اللون كل هنا بروح نجاري عن حد معلت خم معلتات تحت رأت ملا لسات مزأن الأمر كبز جات أمان تني عباش يجر أبي هو تيوم كله بزي سئل خوينا تنبر مالتي كبز ندك أن حنتي تجني أتبلني ما هي تجني ما دهرت أنا يمشت كرخبك كيله نو مش هتعيش أنا حني لا تني ده حر مش هتعيش أنا حني مش ولا تني مو قد نكره خبالة ندور كنا في حنت جزاء تغرق وقانا نتقلي عز أنا حناني بزحت نعم كابك سين جبراني لنا نبذنا إن ده كاش تمت هو كاش عز أنا حني أما ودعت أنا في حنت جزاء كفت ما سبلكو كم زي شقاقة بحد صيرو نتايلا شقاقات كنت أريد الله تعي مدرسة أريد الله ولا حنتها نعطس إليها حرة إلى تنهج أو جحا بلون سأته أمريرة كبدت أنا تسلز أني حتني مرت تالية أنا نحال حزة صخيد الله خو كلا جنس أني حتني أبتوا أنت آ أبي هو تيزير سأعمل أخصبك وخني سمعني هو بزعسها بشقة دوم الأخي أتو يخب لنا خيل خون قلنا تتصلت نيتا وقلنا ما الأخ ما أنا أنا مزيئة يكون أنسي تقلعتي أسوالها زغن تزاري بوها حرية بها لي بجد بها لي ري ما سبلتني أزئلا نابتا أزئلتها بدي حلو حافيلا وقالي أنت يكون نيرو قد ما خيلا تحان لا تبني كيدا كبت معلتي أبي هو ت كبدي فك تخوين هزبنا زبل كل معلتي تخوينه تخويني يودي إني ما تصلي بوت هاي السال زبل كل معلتي كله زب مرة تذكرنا ذاك زاول لا تجي أسي يري أدو خون ناب جزا كنت صلي بين أدو تعزي أس ترغب تخون إلى حسب يا بحق إيه مرتيه مرير نجار وهذا كابتا ديش أني أدب له تني ثم جاء جرا زق الله في فواوي كم جاء جرا زخ زف الله هو عبق زي أبيه را كل من زي بقى تحسبني ولا قد في رهري أخمر أي كل اللي أصحى بجي كل وجهنا عايز ذكر زي مرتيه أبيه وثاي مرة رجحنا في قام عالتزيا 
እግዚአብሔር ይመልሰሞ ናይ ኩሉ ሐቆም ጸሎት ከማን ገዛ አኸሪ ያን እግዚአብሔር ማሲ ልሳስ ተዓጫ ተጽልየላ ተዓጫና አምላኻ ተረበላ ማልቲ ክትረክብ አነ ወን ዓይነይ ክሪአ ሽዑኹም ተፈደኹ ሐስባይ ማለት ነፍሳይ እግዚአብሔር እንተንከበቲ አንዴ ዘሐቡ ፍተነ ማዓልተኳ መመስራት ደሩ ድናግል አብ ኤርትራ እዚ ሓንቲ እተምሩ ዝበለተ ማዓልተ ግን ብዙሕ ይመረት ሓሊፉ ሓቅ ምዝራ ማሲ ብዘይ ፈተና ዘሐልፍ ነገር የለን ፈተና ኸብ ዘሎ ንኹልሃና ብሩህ ነገር ግን ሓደ ማዓልተ ኸም ማዓልታት ተሓቶ ዳተ መላሊሳት መጻነላ ምበር ካብ ዘጋ ጠመንትኒ ዓባ ሽግር አብ ህወታይ ወን ኩሉ ግዜ ስእል ኾይና ትነብር ማለት ነው። ካብ ዘንደቅን ሓንቲ ተጨኒ አትብለኒ። እሞ አይ ተጨኒ አይ ሞዳርድ ናይ ምሸት ክርክ በኪ ለያ። ነኖ ምሸት አይ ጸንሕኒ ይላትኒ። ዳሃር ምሸት አይ ጸንሕኒ ምስበለትኒ። እሞ ግድን ክርክ ባለን ተልኩ ናፍት ሓንቲ ግዛ ተኸርኩ ኾነ ንጽልያ ጸንሕናኒ። ብዙሓት ነን ካብ ክሳይን ገብረን ኢለና ናብዝና እንደጋሽ ተመጽኦ ጋሻ ጻይህኒ አመውዳታ ናብ ሓንቲ ገዛ ክፍት መሰበልኩ ከምዚ ሽቃቃ ያ በሃጽሩ እንታይ ለ ሽቃቃ አትን ጽሩይ ዶሎ ታይ ምድርሲ ጽሩይ ዶሎ ወለ ሓንተን አጽኢለ ሐራ ኢላትን ሄጂ አኦ ጋሃ ቢሎን ሰአተኹ አምሪራ ካብ ደቅና ተጽልጸኒ ሓትኒ ምረት ካሊያ አነ ሐለ ኢሕዘ ዘኺደልኹ ካለ ግን ጸኒ ሓትኒ አብታዋንቲ አ አብ ህወተ ኢዚር ሰዓመል አኽሰጉ ኾይኒ ስምዓነ ወ ብዝሕሰብ ሸቓቕ ዶ መላኺ አቶ ይኽብለን ኸልኸውን ግን አይታ ጸሎት ናይታ ጓልና መልአኽ ማንያት ሰአነ መዚአ ኮነንሲ ታውላቲ አስዋላ ዘኾን ተዛሪብዋ ሐራይ ባሃሌ ብድድ ባሃሌ ሪ መሰበለትኒ ቀጽላ ናብታ ጸሎታ ብድሕሩ ሓፊላ ጓለ እንታይ ኮነ ሩቂት መኺለ ታሓን ኢላትኒ ከይዳ ከባድ ማልቲ አብሂ ወተ ከበድ ይፈቅ ተኾይኑ ህዝብና ዝበል ኩሉ ማዓልቲ ተኾይኑ ተኾይኑ ይወደኒ መጸለይ ቦታ ይሳል ዝበል ኩሉ ማዓልቲ ኩሉ ዘብ ምረተ ዝክራነ ዘግዝ ዘውላ ተጂ አሲ ይሪ አደሆውና ብገዛ ክጽል በይናዶ ተዓጽያስ ትረኽበ ተኸውን ኢለ ሐሰብ ነይ በሐቂ ምረቲው መሪር ነገር ወጣ ካብታ ዝጨኒ ቀደበለትኒ ዘኸምዚ ያገረ ዘቀለ ፍፍኳ ወይ ካምዚ ያገረ ዘኸ ዘፈለኹ ሐብ እግዚአብሔራ ኩሉ ጊዜ በቃ ተሕስበኒ ወላ ኸ ደፊረ ሀሪ አኸማድ አይከልን ያው ሰብጂ ኩሉ ጊዜ ነዓ ዝክር እዚያ ምረተይ አብሂ ወተይ ምራር ዘሕለፍኳ ማዓልት እዚያ ያ እግዚአብሔር ይመልሰሞ ናይ ኩሉ ሐቆም ጸሎት ከማን ገዛ አኸሪ ያን እግዚአብሔር ማሲ ልሳስ ተዓጫ ተጽልየላ ተዓጫና አምላኻ ተረበላ ማልቲ ክትረክብ አነ ወን ዓይነይ ክሪአ ሽዑኹም ተፈደኹ ሐስባይ ማለት ነፍሳይ እቲ እንተንከበቲ አንዴ